bearing bar off of the cam bearing because that's the important part. Because it's real nice to have the cam gear and the crank gear mesh properly. <laughs> if they don't, you either get noise or it won't go together. So this one's got the big dog nut on it. It goes out here in front. And then the bar comes through to that. And so uh, even, and then this one goes in the back, the back cam hole. Uh, even if a guy surfaced the pan, which rarely, rarely happens, but sometimes guys have that surfaced, will that move things down a little. Excuse me, if you're using a K.R. Wilson, old K.R. Wilson machine, they have a thing they call a false cam that they put in the cam bearings, and then the bracket, which is all one cast iron job, goes down, it's got two arms that go down with machine surfaces, you slide them up against that false cam and then clamp it in place and bore. Well, if you take very much off of here, you're moving the holes together because that thing that isn't going to allow. Where this, exaggerating the case, if, if the bar and all do the metal and moves up there, goes over further, it just swings over further and catches up. And it's not a, that's not a big deal, but it is nice to know that it's right. I, I reconditioned a two Model T blocks for a guy, machinist up in Paradise. <clears throat> and he says, uh, <clears throat> he was making government stuff, secret government, fantastic, all CNC machinery, little gadgets, work all day and hold in your hands. And so I rebabbed the main bearings for him. And uh, he comes and gets them. And, he called up in about a week and he said, uh, hey, the one crank fit great there, dude, but he said, the other one doesn't fit. It won't go together. And he said, you must have fudged on your gap. And I said, well, it's, it's a fixed uh, jig. It, it, you can't fudge. And he said, well, it won't go together. And I said, well, bring it down and I'll check it out. If I have to, I'll pour them again, but they're going to come out the same, I would think. So he said, all right, well, <clears throat> before long, Another week or so, he called back and he said, I solved the problem. One of the cam bearings I ordered was like 10 over. It, you can order oversized cam bearings so, so, to, to adjust for wear. So he said, I took it off, put a standard cam back on, it fit like a champ. So I rolled over and did tricks. All right. Um, when I'm working, when I'm doing serious finish boring, I try to maintain 70 degrees in the shop. In the winter time, that you know, it takes a little doing. It's out in my garage. Summertime, I bore in the morning and then quit. I keep an eye on the thermometer. When things get hot, they swell up. Uh, I bored a set of Model A rods in the middle of the summer, and the sweat was running out of me. And I had a light shining on the rods in the in the machine. Everything was hot, and the damn things expanded up. And then when they got back to the temperature about 60, 70 degrees, what's supposed to check? The damn things are like a thousandth uh, small. And so, God, so I dialed it back in and shaved that out of there, but I got over that. Now, this thing, last, I'm almost out of breath. Uh, this gadget is another dude. Uh, well, everything up here is a homemade thing. I didn't, I didn't stress this thing. Uh, one, this is an adjustable boring head for those of you that are machinist oriented. <clears throat> then it uses them in a milling machine. Got an R8 taper and a dial over here and stick an Allen wrench in and loose set screws. And you crank that thing over so many thousands and it moves away from center. So the farther from center it gets, the bigger circle it makes. So I used it to bore that connecting rod. And this picture here is a picture of a 42 inch. Uh, connecting rod uh, bearings for water pumps, 1880s era water pumps. Two big connecting rods on each pump, there were two of them. They're in the Sacramento water system now. When, when you go down five, where you come to Richards Boulevard or whatever it is, off to the right on that kind of a little meadow, there's a brick building sitting there. I thought it was some museum or some other substation. Well, it's a pump house, and that's where those pumps are. So I got the privilege of reborn. I said, way back there is where it anchors. They were 42 inches long, a two inch bore. And I only had to bat at one end and bore that. But this thing, the history on this is when I started teaching at Marysville High School back in 1964, uh, I had $600 
per year to operate six classes. That's welding classes and machine shop. Now things were cheaper then, but not that much. So <laughs> welding supplies, glass lenses, steel, whatever came out of that 600. Well, I needed to bore the connecting rods on a 1918 Grant car that I had. And the Grant had the wrist pin clamped just like a Model T. Well, that's not a handy thing to run a reamer through and get a round true hole because I was going into oversized wrist pins because they were a little loose. I don't know if you ever heard of a Grant, but sold in Marysville, brand new. So I could have bought an adjustable boring head for $200, but I didn't have the 200 So I thought, the hell, it'll make it. So that, that's where this thing came from. I got on their dudes, 1966. <laughs> okay, so then I need to cut the X grooves and the connecting rods. So I, I don't know how they do it. I came up with this thing. And uh, just let me kind of fudge my way here a bit. Um, I think this is going to work for illustration. And I take a connecting rod, put it down over the bar there, back the tool off. This thing goes down inside the rod and it centers it to the bar. Wiggle it around. These fingers clamp and hold it. And then I, I take the, the bar down. I get, there's the cutting tool right there. And I eyeball through the dipper hole and get it right in the middle of the dipper hole. Clamp that. And then I adjust this as whatever I need to do. Let's just say like right, come on, like right there. And then this is clamped in the vise, and then I turn it and it goes up and down off, off of this cam down there. See that? Mm -hmm. As long as you go in the right direction, you get that groove cut just right. But you do have to hold it up and keep it there. And when I get halfway, one groove done, then I stop in the dipper hole, rotate that thing 180 and do the other one again so you get the X. But uh, outfits, they don't care for that anymore. It does take away bearing surface. So uh, we'll just do the straight groove like that one right there. Well, anyway, uh, the last thing I'll share with you is this guy, Kajorki, had a birthday a couple of months ago. And uh, we were talking a lot. And he said, dude, I know you had a birthday. And he said, uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But he said, you're getting older, and he said, you need to teach your kids how to do some of that work. And I said, well, I got one that's kind of interested. And then I said, you, you're, you're 80 year old, you're going to take a header in your shop, you're going to break something, and I can't, he said, I hate pouring babbits, you know that, so you got to <laughs> teach your son. So my son is getting involved. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he really made me feel great, made my dick. Well, I think that's about it, guys.